And there are some, for example, this misconception that a lot of people have regarding sexuality with spirituality, that there's this thing that if you're a spiritual person and you want to reach God realization, you should be celibate. So there are schools of spirituality that are practicing that uh, and promoting to be celibate. And if somebody naturally is inclined to go that direction, that's fine. It's never been my experience. As long as I remember, I, I've had sexual energy and, uh, and it's been my reality. And I, I don't see how that could have been a hindrance with uh, divine and, and uh, divine consciousness. Basically, I'm thinking if, if this is a bad thing, then why is it created? Why God created sexuality and that's the form of reproduction? And how could that keep me away from God realization? Because it never did. How do we work with with this energy while staying married through the relationship? Um, okay, let me see if I understand that. Say that, say that again. How do you, uh, could you elaborate on that? I'm not quite sure if I understand. Well, our spouse have their needs and we have, uh, we don't feel that desire. And it's not, it's not that we lack the desire for our spouse and desire for others. It's just that we just don't have the desire. Right. <laughs> right, right, exactly. So this goes back to what I was talking about is I, I said we're caught into this system which is not really working and falling apart. So, okay, so you come to this point, again, I'm not a marriage counselor, I never, I, and I don't claim to be or, or a sex counselor, I'm only going based on my own findings in this period of my life that I've discovered to know myself. That's all I can talk about, okay? So it, this is not an area of my expertise. Uh, but um, it, it, is, it is a paradox because you have arrived at this place that you've lost your, your mojo for having sex and there's nothing wrong with it and your partner maybe still want to have sex. So it is a dilemma. How do we deal with it? I mean, are you able to let him go and he can go find it somewhere else if you can't give it to him? Is he willing to go somewhere else to get it? I, I'm, I'm, see, that's why I'm saying the whole system from the beginning is not working is this marriage union thing that you have to stick to one person and you're not allowed to go and explore your sexuality with anybody else. This way of thinking, it's already wrong. It's not working anymore. It's going to fall apart. As we can see, it's falling apart. It's just going to be a point in our lives that we come out of this denial and we really look at it and we say, you know what? this is not working. So I guess as a collective, we're not there yet. Could it be in my spiritual practice about detachment in terms of letting go of clinging, craving, addictions, and attachments? Of what? That you don't want to have sex because you're spiritually evolving? Is that what you're saying? Uh, the detachment from everything in terms of addictions, cravings, addiction for food, for anything, you know, things that you must have. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm shedding my attachment to material stuff, to anything external, you know, attachment to pain, to anything, a medication, all these right. things that right. uh, when I'm practicing. Yeah, could be, could be, yeah. 
I mean, I guess my guess is as good as anyone's. Yeah, it could be. I mean, could naturally we're drawn to this place of not being sexually inclined? Uh, yeah, I mean, is there something wrong with it? No. I, I don't, I don't see, see it wrong or right or should or should not. If you're not feeling it, you're not feeling it. And that's cool. There's nothing wrong with it. The problem is that when you're not feeling it, and then you have all these dogmas and belief systems that there is something wrong with you and you should be feeling it, or vice versa. You're feeling it, and then you're giving yourself all these guilt and shame, uh, guilt trips that you shouldn't. And that's what's happening right now on the planet of how much we give ourselves a hard time and guilt, a guilt trips that why am I feeling it? Why do I desire to have sex while I have a partner and I have a beautiful partner and she's beautiful physically and loving, da, 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 but I keep thinking about her best friend or I keep thinking about other women or men. That's where the problem is. Yeah. Uh, oh, you're welcome. I'm glad you brought it up. Hi, Sophie. Long time no see. Are you still there? Are you still? Oh, yeah. Hi, Sophie. I haven't seen you or spoken to you for ages. Uh, oh, hi. Sophie, Sophia, <laughs> Sophia, hi. No, hi. hi. Yeah. Hi. Oh, my God. I, I, I know. And this is wonderful to be able to check in with you all my god yeah i <laughs> yeah people Yay. yeah are you still living in venice area or where where are no, you I located was there, i was there 20 years um and then when COVID hit i was just i just felt like i was in a cage you know okay I was just in this little box and you know i just needed out and so i'm in the countryside of oregon at the moment in a, in a family home and let me tell you there's no sex happening here <laughs> <laughs> you know my mom and i are getting a lot of quality time together which actually is a blessing as well but right. my god i'm sitting here listening to this and i'm thinking you know, I've seen a cowboy, I saw, like, you know, it's just, there's, it's, it's, it's pretty much, it's pretty much a year of work for me. <laughs> you know? Wow. So, I'd love to unleash my energy, but if there's <laughs> no man in sight. So, it's good to see you. Yeah, yeah likewise. Very, very cool. Likewise, yeah. yeah. Thanks for joining us. So, did you have a question for me, or uh, you said I can't wait? I can't remember what that feels like. Oh, this, this, I no. Yeah. I guess my whole thing, my frustration has been, you know, I whenever I felt sexually active and I've gone out to, you know, I'm still single, and I'm just, I'm so frustrated about that. Like, I have not had luck. For 10 years to manifest the right and appropriate man for me, I don't have a problem with attracting men. I mean, men are dogs, excuse me, but they're <laughs> no problem. Like, you can go sit at a bar and you can have 20 men, right? It's just, you know, that's not, you know. And I got very frustrated because I'm a sexual person and that energy would attract so many men. And then it was kind of like, it, sex became very boring for me. It was right. kind of like a mechanical, empty and I'm not one of these people that believes you have sex with someone and then it's like you're connected for a lifetime. I mean, I've had more than one sexual partner and I don't feel like I should be having to feel attached to someone for the rest of my life because of that experience. But I'm also a bit frustrated because I haven't been able to find the, the man for me that, that I want to go that deeply with. Right. I want to get connected right. with. 